Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so today I want to go over some of our end mills or router bits uh, that we use in the CNC in the shape hook up. Um, I've been wanting to kind of cover what we've done, um, how we started, what we bought when we originally started, uh, some of the recommendations we have so that you skip buying bits that really aren't the best way to go and jump right into the best bits you can buy for a good budget price. So this is what came with the Shea Poco. It is a quarter inch end mill. Flat, it would cut a flat surface. It is a four flute. Each one of the cutting spots is a flute. So this is a spiraled four flute. When we take a look at what you would normally use with a router, this would be straight and two flutes. So that's the difference in what those look like to start with. Now this was a good bit, but um, as I notice now that I have actually purchased uh, better end mills, we've got this one right here. Now this is a two flute quarter inch end mill. So you notice it, less flutes. So what we originally did is we actually bought a, a kit of cheap end mills and they came like this, all four flute spiraled. Now, these work all right, but the problem with them that I've found over time is that they don't leave good surface finishes. They don't leave a flat surface finish very well or the sides when it's cutting out. And when I've gone to this new carbide two flute, it is leaving an awesome finish. The swirls at the bottom are almost completely gone and the sides come out real good without shavings on them. Now if we take a look at the original one that you would use in a router, the reason that I've liked the spiral bits a whole lot better is because they leave a better side finish and bottom finish as well. So these will absolutely work. The four flutes will absolutely work, but the cleanest finish we've had is always going to be with the two flute finish. And this is a carbide bit. Now let's take a look at kind of the different carbide bits that we've used. Or no, actually. So the router that came with the Shea Poco has a quarter inch collet basically in it. So it can take a quarter inch bit. I also went ahead and got the eighth inch one so that I could use eighth inch bits. And what we did after using a few different things, we've sorry, we do that. So with the eighth inch bit, we do the same thing: a two flute end mill spiraled that fits in here, and then that fits in there, so we can do eighth inch cutting and super clean, smaller amount much better to get more detail in than the quarter inch. Now these are the main two bits that I used for quite a long time. Then <clears throat> we can get into a little bit more specialty bits. If you're wanting to do any kind of true 3D cutting, this is a bullnose bit. So the end of this one has a radius across it and you only want to cut with the very tip of it. So these tool pathings take a very, very long time because you're cutting with such a small little space. But this is how you would do a true 3D cut uh, curves in your, in your designs. Those are the bits that we originally bought. And then since then we've actually gone up in quality a little bit with really out spending a whole lot of money. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. What, what good budget bits you can buy. Now this was a kit that came with these four bits and they're all carbide tipped. Okay, so this is a tapered bullnose. So what it is is it's quarter inch shank and then it tapers down to a very fine tip. Now this works extremely well because it's a very strong bit and can cut 
very very fine detail for your 3d cuts now the only time that this would be a problem is if you're coming off of a ledge so we'll use this as an example if you're coming off the ledge and needing to do fine detail really close you can't you're gonna cut into your ledge because of the taper that's when you would need to use one of the flat ones or non tapered end mills that I showed you a second ago but if you don't have any ledges like this this is gonna be your best finish uh, bit for any kind of 3d cutting I showed you the quarter inch that is the up cut and this is a down cut now you'll notice that they spin backwards of each other so this one as it's cutting it's going to throw all of your sawdust up out of the cut so it's gonna make you know the mess that we normally see of these and it's shooting all the sawdust up these cut down so what it's doing is it will actually leave you a cleaner cut but it packs the sawdust down so that can be a problem in hardwoods um, and plastics and things but when you're doing MDF or plywood this leaves an incredibly smooth cut and it's an awesome bit to use this little bit is actually a combination of the two so it's a little bit hard to see but it is an eighth inch two flute spiraled compression bit. So the very tip of this is an up cut. So it shoots sawdust up and that's how you get a good first cut. Then the rest of it is a down cut and that will leave all of your finishing super smooth. I use this on all of our letters, anything basically that I do in MDF, this is the bit to use because it leaves the finish incredibly smooth and we have to do less finishing after we pull anything out of the CNC. You can get these in eighth inch or quarter inch. This is just an eighth inch that we have. Now these bits here are all considered V bits of different kinds. So we've got, to start with, uh, you've got different degrees. So this is a 60 degree, a 90 degree, a 120, and then we've got another 90 degree, and a 60 degree in carbide. So these are more used when you need metal. I did our brass brand with this one because it's a much stronger bit that these are not gonna be able to cut into. And you can also do, if you're not doing very deep and you just need a very fine, smooth cut, these will work great for that. For the majority of the V cutting that we would do in wood, I like to use these. So these are just straight flutes, two of them, and come to a nice point. So now the reason we would use different ones on these is because if you look closely, you can tell that this one is going to be able to cut wider and not go through a shallow piece of wood, and then even more so on the 120. So if you're not wanting flat at the bottom, and you want the whole thing to be V'd, sometimes you'll need to go up in degrees so that you don't go through the wood. Most of the time I can use a 60 degree. If we want a flat bottom, the tool pathing would have a clear path that we would use a flat end mill for and then just V-bit on the sides. So it all depends on your tool pathing, but these are great options to have to be able to use different degrees. This bit that I haven't used came in a pack that was more for planing. Uh, I haven't bought one of the big good planer bits just because they are very expensive. I don't plane very often on the CNC, but if I did, this is the one that I would use on it. It's just flat, it's got blades all the way across it, and could plane your board down for you. Technically, you could use any router bits in the CNC, but you could cause problems with some. And this is one that would cause a problem. So this would be if you're wanting to put a quarter inch radius on the side and the bearing's gonna be in your way. You can't run this on the CNC. You could take the bearing off and maybe grind this part down and then run this on it. So it would probably work, but not the best way and tool pathing would be a little bit tricky. So what they've come up with is this bit, which is a white side bit, and it comes to a point, and it is another roundover bit. So 
it just goes straight in and cuts it and would cut your round over in the same fashion that this would just without having to mess with the ends so that's one of the more specialty bits that unless you're needing roundovers is not a necessary one to get we also like to do keyholes uh, in the back of any of our signs or letters and maybe even the pencils that we've done for teachers and this is the bit that does that so <clears throat> what it does is that it's actually two different sizes on the cutting and the bigger one will go down in and then it will cut the smaller size out in the surface and that's how you are able to put a screw in it and hang it from the wall that is a keyhole path so when you do that you have to be very precise make sure that it goes deep enough in the first pass but not too deep and we'll just cut in that area and there is a, a way to do that within uh, the tool pathing that's very easy and uh, one day we'll get a video of that so that we show you how we do that another normal router bit that I actually like to use is this just bowl bit um, and it's a three-quarter it's very similar to the rounded bull bits that uh, we can use for the more fine 3d cutting but this is just a three-quarter bull bit and leaves a very nice round over and it's a good way to make trays very easily and consistently um, without needing to make a a template and do it with a handheld router just let the CNC do the work it's another one that I do the clear out work with a flat end mill and then come in and just do the finishing with this and you're left with a pretty smooth finish that you don't have to do a lot of sanding on. Over the last you know, few years we've ended up with a, a lot of router bits, uh, different sizes, uh, different qualities. Here's another one that's just a 16th inch end mill. We needed this for doing really fine work. Um, and really, I would say the biggest thing is to uh, not go out and buy the most expensive things first. We've made all this work with maybe not spending more than $15 on an individual bit. So there's very good ways to do uh, budget starting with CNC bits. And we've gotten better quality as the time goes by. Uh, some that, you know, I, I wish we didn't buy at the beginning, but we did. and. Uh, you know we made it work and we've just uh, gotten upgrades since then so I'm gonna go ahead and grab uh, links to the the bits that we really like uh, some of the kits that we've bought that have a, a bunch of different bits in them and uh, we'll get those in the description so that if you guys uh, are in need of any bits and want to go with uh, known good bits um we'll get that in there you know if you guys have any recommendations on good bits please throw them in the comments below if you have any questions of course let me know and thanks for coming and watching like and subscribe and we will see you next time